How can you personally confront white supremacy? It's a question being asked more and more in the music industry, and white artists are coming up with their own answers. It's Tuesday, June 23rd, and this is The Current Music News. I'm Jay. And I'm Jay. As the music world confronts institutional racism and white supremacy, individual artists are wondering what steps they can take to establish a new, more equitable norm, or at least help move us towards that goal. Uh, one of the most dramatic suggestions comes from Jeff Tweedy of Wilco. He's personally pledging to commit 5% of his writing revenues moving forward to organizations moving towards racial justice. And what's more, he said in a statement that given that, quote, the modern music industry is built almost entirely on black art, there should actually be a step built into the music publishing process that allows artists to automatically divert a percentage of their revenue to organizations that assist and support black communities. And Fiona Apple is also pledging some revenue from her highly acclaimed new album to initiatives supporting Black and Indigenous communities. And she's taking a slightly different approach than Jeff Tweedy. So what she said is she's pledging two years worth of TV and movie sync income from two songs from, like I said, her highly acclaimed new album, Fetch the Bolt Colors. Basically what that means is anytime in the next two years, if her two songs appear in either TV or movies, that money will go to those causes. Uh, so she said that at a minimum, she'll donate 50,000 to each of the two initiatives, but she also said, uh, I will be able to give a lot more if I earn some of that Hollywood cash. And her pledge is really a reflection of uh, the fact that music fans get it. When a song is played in a TV or a movie, they know that that money goes to the artist. And so this really came to a head when a song from Gary Glitter was used in the hit movie Joker. Uh, when people saw that, they were asking, how much of my money that I spent on that ticket is going to a convicted pedophile? And that statement from Fiona Apple is really a, a reaction to that, a reflection of that. It's a reminder that when they decide what songs they're going to put in that TV show or that movie, those movie directors are not just making an artistic choice, but oftentimes an ethical one. Meanwhile, artists are thinking about the signals they've been sending, even unintentionally, with their band names and merch. One of those artists is Patterson Hood, co-founder of the band known as Drive-By Truckers. On NPR, Hood published a long essay called, Now, About the Bad Name I Gave My Band. He writes that when he heard about Lady Antebellum changing their name, it made him think about his own band name, which he explains was partly inspired by the crime sagas that were filling a lot of hip hop when the band started up in Atlanta in 1996. He says he now realizes, and to be clear, I'm paraphrasing here from a long essay, he says he now realizes it was not appropriate or helpful to reference the violence plaguing black communities in the name of a white band that just set out to be, quote, fun and rowdy. He says he's not changing the band name yet. You kind of get the impression he wants to avoid the Lady A situation where you jump into a new name and potentially make things worse. But he's open to suggestions. And in the meantime, he's trying to reckon with his own past and the nation's in songs like What It Means. And if you say it wasn't right, showing the shot him in his tracks. Well, I guess that means that you ain't black. It means that you ain't black. I mean, Barack Obama won, and you can choose where to be. But you don't see too many white kids lying bleeding on the street. Last week, I was able to sit down with Elizabeth and Jonathan from the New Zealand band The Beths. And they have this new album that's coming out soon. It's called Jump Rope Gazers. And as we continued the conversation, it kind of became clear that they were a bit uncomfortable uh, talking about their own project and the, the difficulty of releasing new music when, as white artists, they feel like this is a time that other voices should be elevated. I mean, it was already kind of we knew it was going to be strange in the last, obviously within the last month, it's, it feels awful <laughs> uh, just with like um, the, the conversations 
that we're having much more around kind of black lives matter and like wanting that to be taking the forefront and like feeling good about that like being in the public consciousness and like it doesn't feel great to be taking up space during that so it's it's kind of striking a balance of trying to we're not we're definitely not ignoring it and like just trying to do business as usual it's so it's it's trying to just be actively engaged and and learning and and trying to continue the conversation about it while I guess I don't know going back to work I suppose yeah it's (laughs) been um, completely the releasing this record's been kind of I feel like now it would have just been so boring to release the record if there was no virus and no Black Lives Matter movement and, and everything. It's just to re- constantly recontextualize the album and, and our lives. And yeah, it's co- been cause for, for a lot of reflection and a lot of conversations and and then trying to have those conversations publicly as well because we're releasing an album at the same time as all of this is going on. It's been a lot to do and a lot to think about. That's the current music news. We'll continue to follow all these conversations in the music world. We're going to leave you with a clip from a powerful new video from Minneapolis artist Maria Issa. She had a personal connection to George Floyd. He worked at venues that she often performed at. And as she wrote in a statement accompanying her song, Como Duele, uh, he often helped her carry her bomba drum to her car after shows. And this song is just a reminder of why... It's important to be asking these questions and how urgent it really is that they are asked.